All right, hey everybody, welcome back. Drink your waters, drink your teas. Mama's back. So, last night I had a whole thing happen, right? I was stressed out. I've been feeling my vibrations go low. And I've been trying to just put myself back in balance. I started doing yoga, I started praying, I started meditating, I started doing the fasting. And I have slowly been trying to work and calming myself. Lately, it looks like my PTSD, my depression has been all over the place. It's been attacking me a lot more than usual. So, it was a number of things. You know, it was one thing going wrong after another, after another, to a funeral, to another thing going wrong, and I got hit, you know. There was so much going on, so much stress. Um, my vibrations got lower, and I was attacked. I was in the garage having a cigarette, and I was just having a rough day and I was like, hey, this is enough. And usually I go back there to pray. Um, I go back there to vent, to just give myself a space, to be away from everybody and give myself a space. When I was back there, I sat down and just as I was going to start going through my mind of what I need to do, I felt an energy enter the garage. It came into the room. It felt very heavy. It felt very evil. And I prayed. I started praying with God and it went away. Got scared. Scott got scared of Jesus and he ran away. So demons are real. And I think it's important for everybody to know that, everybody to understand that we are in a spiritual warfare. We are in a spiritual warfare, whether you want to believe that or not, we are. A lot of the attacks, a lot of other attacks are going to come to you if you are awake. If you are awake, you will be attacked. And you will not be aware. In this episode, I want to talk to you guys about awareness. Why? Why awareness? Everybody has it. You're here. You're aware, right? You're awake. But you're not. See, not until somebody brings it up to you to be aware, to be awake. You start paying attention to where your mind is, where your thoughts are, where you are, emotions are. I started... Going back to the beginning and listening to my videos and just getting a refresher on what I can give you guys so you guys can take with you. And the one that came up was awareness. A while back, I was terribly ill and I knew something was wrong. I knew I had to get right with God. I knew I was being attacked spiritually. And I try to bring this up to people, and a lot of people do not understand. A lot of people will see to the limit that they need to, and then after that, call you crazy. When you're fully awake, everything and anything matters. Your words, your actions, your thoughts. Your thoughts with God matter. Your thoughts against God, your fights with God, your arguments, your disagreements, everything matters. We get to a point when we're trying to become self-aware about the things going on around us. But within that transition, we get lost. Within that transition, we lose sight. Of what's important of what we need to do when I was sick my awareness began to settle my third eye began to open and I became awake and you don't become awake overnight 
you become awake with practice, with discipline, with love for God, you become enlightened. The thing with the awareness is if you are trying to get closer to God, if you are trying to stop sinning and work better, you're trying to fix yourself, trying to change who you are, your subconscious is not going to let you. A lot of times our brains will not allow us to shift out of that automatic pilot that we have. A lot of it's based off the fight or flight system, the response. If you're constantly on the fight or flight, you're not aware. You are on autopilot and you are surviving. When you are able to naturally balance yourself back into homeostasis, you give yourself the opportunity, you give your mind the opportunity to finally open up. You're finally able to see. You're not just looking. You're seeing. You're feeling. When I became aware of my awareness, it was the scariest shit that I could ever go through. I even made a painting. <laughs> Um, I made a couple and the best way I can explain to you your awareness is it kind of feels like there's two of you within you there's two of you and one part of you has a little bit of evil in it it has the ego it has the pride it has a lot of qualities that are not sought by God. Um, a lot of envy, a lot of jealousy. I didn't understand what was being shown to me during that time. But it's been a year from when the time I saw this and now it just makes perfect sense and I can explain it to you I can explain it to you guys and so you guys can get the work done I was sick and I was done taking medication I started looking more into holistic approaches to help my body heal to help my mind heal, to help my trauma. I had to go in my mind. I had to forgive myself and I had to forgive those people that hurt me. And it took a while, it took a long time. And it's just a practice that you do every single day. Every single day, it matters how much time you put into this. I began getting spiritual attacks during this time. My body was not taking nutrition. I was severely depressed. I was skin and bones. And my frequency was very, very low. I felt like there was kind of like an interference with my vibration. And I, I, for the life of me, I was just like, what the fuck is this? Um, in my meditations, I started seeing these colors and they're going up and down and then it kind of frizzes, right? It kind of looked like an EKG machine. The reading started it does the up and down, right? That's what it felt like. What's what it looked like. But it had seven particular colors. Seven particular colors of the rainbow, of the chakras. Um, 
and I didn't, I didn't get it in the beginning. I was like, what the fuck is this? Um, eventually, it was my subconscious telling me, my spirit telling me that there was a lot of disruption within me that I had to fix. And I didn't, I didn't know how. <laughs> I was just like, okay, how the fuck do I fix this? I tried talking to pastors, I tried talking to doctors, I tried talking to specialists, to spiritual guides, and a lot of people could not give me answers. So the only thing I can do was go to the book, go to the holy book and find my answers there. As I started digging into my awareness, different things started to appear different things started to change um, it felt like I was in a different realm with infinite realities of possibilities that could happen I was stuck and what you call a genjutsu <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna talk that word it's from Naruto a genjutsu is basically kind of like a dream the kind of hypnotizing you're stuck in this reality and you're being tortured and I didn't realize that's what's happening to me but that was happening to me um, I was having nightmares I was seeing demons I was feeling them I didn't realize that a lot of my my words my actions fed them right when God started showing me the things that there is in my mind, I was fucking terrified. How is this in my mind? How is this in their dormant? We have this horrible, horrible little thing. That makes us sinners. And why? Why does it make us sinners? From childhood, our children are pure. They're innocent. They're untouched. Somewhere along the line, the kids get disrupted. Their conscience becomes dirty. Becomes attacked. And then you're asleep. Being asleep means you don't see the demons out here. You don't understand that your actions are wrong. You feed off to your ego. Your, your allegations of why you can do what you want. You can drink, you can smoke, you can do whatever you want will always have a reason of why you should do it, why you can't do it, right? Um, a lot of times people will tell you, God loves you how you are. You don't need to stop smoking. You don't need to stop drinking. You don't need to stop partying. That's false. At one point, you will understand that the language of man does no good for you. A lot of men, not just men, women, you know, but I'm saying it as a group. They do not want you near God. Even your own brothers and sisters will get jealous that you have such a connection with God because they don't. At one point, you're going to have to listen to God and drop those habits. Drop those things that kill your body. Drop those things that kill your mind. Drop those things that restrict you from getting closer to God. When we're kids and we get disrupted with sin, we grow up with the intention of wanting to do better. 
but only to a certain extent because our comfortability begins to sway away. We don't worry too much about serving God or being good. We worry about having fun, enjoying life, and coming as a whole person as how we are. The thing is, we're not who we are. Over the years, we've been programmed, we've been influenced, and we are not our true selves. When you begin to become self-aware, you realize that there's a lot of work to do within you. Pieces of you that are broken will haunt you until you forgive yourself. Until you forgive the person that caused that harm. Until you let it go. It takes so much practice. But it takes so much strength to let go of the pain that someone else has caused you. Especially as a child. It takes a lot of work to forgive people. Grown people that have hurt you as a grown adult holy fuck i thought we were on the same team but how it's not always like that people are very fake people will try to take your light and it's just like when you're in school and you take gum and everybody wants a piece of gum people that you didn't even talk to talk to you because they want a piece of gum right they want what makes you happy a lot of people will come after your light just because they can't have it they will attack you from far away they will attack you from right next door to take your light to take it to destroy you and make sure they're on top. You cannot allow that to happen. You gotta guard yourself. Not just with the external environments, not just external beings, but all the ones within as well. As I began to unravel my mind, the unconscious, and work my way in there, there were so many windows, so many trains, so many alternative realities that I have been having such a hard time to try to explain to people. So I started painting it, right? And this was the first one. I fucked it up, so I'm doing it again. It's a mess because I'm learning to paint, right? But I didn't know what this painting meant, right? I didn't understand what it meant. There was these orbs, there was these aisles of windows everywhere. There was screaming. There was red everywhere. It looked like a kaleidoscope. So every time I would turn around, images would change. The corners were dark and heavy. And for the life of me, I was like, I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. So over time, it's been revealed that it's the tree of life. It's a tree of life, and those orbs and circles are from the um, it's from the tree of life. I don't, I can't come with the word right now, but I need to show you guys another picture um, before I could get more into depth with this. So, hang tight, everybody, hang tight.